The very first iPhone 14 images have been leaked. They're only of the displays, but they do show us some major changes coming to the entire lineup. We know that the mini model is surely going away due to poor sales, and in its place, Apple will be introducing a standard Max model. So same size as the Pro Max, uh, just with a much worse camera and no promotion. And I honestly think that it's a pretty good idea to drop the mini. You see, even though a lot of people um, claimed that they want a mini version of the iPhone, like I surely love the idea of having a smaller iPhone, but that's the thing. We all love the idea, but not the actual phone. That's why everyone keeps on buying larger iPhones, and that's why Apple is sadly killing the Mini. We can also see that that rumored pill-shaped camera cutout will indeed be present on the Pro models, and the overall size of it is actually quite similar to what we rendered in our recent concept. That is to say, it is quite big. Some were even saying that it cuts more into your content than the notch ever did. However, it turns out that the Pro models are now taller than the regular models, which means that when aligned from the bottom, the new pill cutout doesn't cut more into your content than the notch ever did. It's just just that now you get more vertical space. Space that could be used for an expanded status bar, with hopefully the battery percentage indicator making a comeback amongst a few others that sadly got hidden when Apple introduced the notch. I've also noticed that the bezels are getting thinner on the Pro models, with the 14 Pro having almost half the thickness of the bezels of the 14, but really the difference between the 14 Pro Max and the 14 Max in terms of the bezel sizes is barely even there. So it appears that all iPhone 14 have different bezel sizes, with the 14 Pro having the thinnest, followed by the 14 Pro Max, the 14 Max, and then the 14. I do find it a bit odd for Apple to be doing this, as this will be the first time uh, two iPhone models from the same lineup do not share the same design language. But anyway, there is so much more. We've also had a leaked video showing how 3D mockups of the iPhone 14s compared to the iPhone 13s. And it seems that if you take an iPhone 14 and you try to fit it in an iPhone 13 case, it will not fit as the 14 is a bit larger than the 13 in size, which is actually contrary to the previous schematic leaks where we did not see any dimension changes to the regular 14. The 14 Pro also cannot fit inside a 13 Pro case, as we already know that this is getting taller, but as you can see, the camera unit is getting even bigger as well. This is because of that new 48 megapixel sensor that I covered in our previous iPhone 14 video. Now, the iPhone 14 Max does fit inside a 13 Pro Max case, but there is loads of space left for the camera module. Uh, 13 Pro Max has a triple lens camera system, uh, whereas the 14 Max will have the same dual camera system as the regular 14. And the 14 Pro Max also fits inside the 13 Pro Max case, uh, but the camera module does not as just like the 14 Pro, it is getting larger. So there are a couple of things here that do not match up with those display leaks or even some of the previous dimension leaks. Things such as the iPhone 14 Pro Max getting thicker and narrower. We didn't see that at all from the mockups, although this might be quite hard to tell. Or the iPhone 14, which was rumored to be uh, the same size as the 13 from all the dimension leaks, but it is actually taller according to the mockups. The mockups were based on accurate dimensions according to Mako Takara, who has previously shared accurate mockups, uh, so it is unclear to me as to why we have differences between the mockups and the previous dimension leaks. Uh, one thing that's for sure though is that the iPhone 14 Pro, at least, is getting taller, and both Pro models would indeed have even larger camera units for that larger 48 megapixel sensor. So what's my take on the entire iPhone 14 lineup? Well, it's weird. Speaking of weird, isn't it weird how some of you still don't have a VPN? Well, this is why you need to check out NordVPN, our sponsor for this video, which is actually more than just a VPN. It now features a built-in threat protection feature that 1. blocks trackers from every website to keep you anonymous, 2. blocks those malicious and pesky ads that you see all over the web, and 3. blocks harmful websites that may contain dangerous malware. Threat protection is included for free for every NordVPN user. NordVPN also includes a dark web monitor that scans the web for your leaked data, and it also lets you create custom presets optimized for downloading, browsing, and more. Go to nordvpn.com slash ZOTVPN or click the link below for an exclusive discount and a bonus. And with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you can try Nord without any risks. And now, back to the video, I was saying that the iPhone 14 lineup 
is weird. The Pro models are a decent improvement over the 13 Pros, mostly thanks to the camera and the notch removal, but I am still not a fan of that pill cutout. Maybe that could change once I start using it, but for the time being, I still feel that most Android phones do look better. And don't even get me started with the non-Pro models. The regular 14 would look identical to the 13. It would have the same camera module, only slightly repositioned. The chip is said to be the same A15 as the iPhone 13, so that's not getting changed either. And the display won't be getting ProMotion either, as this is said to remain an exclusive feature for the Pro models. So yeah, this would literally be um, an iPhone 13. The non-Pro models are the least exciting iPhone upgrade in ever. Now, one change is, of course, the RAM, which is getting bumped to six gigabytes, which is cool. But the thing is, you won't be able to notice this by default. Like, this is an under the hood thing. The average user won't be able to tell. Now, according to GSM Arena, Apple has now signed a deal with display maker Bowie to ship 25% of the regular iPhone 14 models with OLED displays made by Bowie. Now, Bowie has been trying to get a deal with Apple for years now, but their displays were always never on par with the ones from Samsung or LG. So Apple kept saying no. So if the iPhone 14 is literally identical to the 13, um, and of course you get the Bowie display, in that case, uh, the, the phone is inferior, right? It's, it's an iPhone 13 with a worse display, so it's, it's worse. So in that case, you would assume Apple to drastically drop the price. But according to John Prosser, they won't be doing so. So the iPhone 14 will start from the same 799 price point. However, the Pros will be getting $100 more expensive. When it comes to the 14 Mac, I think that out of these four phones, that is that offers you the best value, literally. Especially once you trade your device in, I think this phone will be the star of the show, as it ticks all the boxes for most people for a fairly decent price. And fun fact, 899 is the same price as the Pixel 6 Pro or um, the OnePlus 10 Pro. And we all know that the 14 Max would most certainly have a noticeably better battery life. It would also last you for longer uh, in terms of software updates. And I also think that for most people, uh, the 14 Max's camera would be a better choice. This is thanks to a significantly better video experience, despite the lack of a telephoto module. I don't really think this is an issue, but I do think that the telephoto module is an issue on the Pro models. And here's why. When you take a look at a phone such as the S22 Ultra, you have 100x zoom on this, right? Digital zoom. But the iPhone has, um, like what, 15x digital zoom or 3x optical zoom compared to this one, which has 10x optical. So the difference is just huge. And the iPhone cannot compete. I mean, you'll probably know by now that I'm definitely not an iPhone hater. I'm, you know, I've been using an iPhone since the iPhone 3G in 2008, but I'm just disappointed. I'm disappointed that everyone else is making massive upgrades and Apple cannot even add USB Type-C, not even to mention, you know, the insane zoom that other phones have or even innovative features like, you know, foldables um, or S Pens and stuff like that. Apple is really, really far behind. So if you maybe want to see some cool, interesting products that you probably didn't really hear about, definitely check out our new Shorts channel. Yes, we have a shorts channel called Xenotech Shorts. So definitely subscribe and um, yeah, we'll be making some cool content there. It's a new area that uh, we want to get into and uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what do you guys think. But what do you guys think of the iPhone 14 lineup? I don't know, do you find it boring, the non-pro models, or are you excited for the pro models with you know the 48 megapixel sensor, uh, maybe the uh, removal of the notch? Is, is that something that excites you and the taller displays? I don't know, let me know in the comments. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next one. Set of tech, signing out. Cheers.